welcome back to Sheller, everybody, or in this case, just outside of Sheller. This is going to be our dedicated hiking video for all the hikes around Sheller, which is probably the main reason you're going to come here. That was the main reason we came here. Yes. And we're actually here at Laguna Chicabal, which is about a 45 minute drive outside of Sheller. It's super easy to get to independently. We just booked an Uber this morning around 6.30. Drops you off at the Torito station. The Toritos are essentially just pickup trucks with yeah. bullhorns on the front and they megaphones. They like Safari Jeep or something. Like yeah. That. Yeah, four by four because that's kind of the vehicle you want to take up here. So that takes you all the way up for about 50 quetzals per person and then it takes you past the entrance to the park where you have to pay another 50 quetzals per person to enter the park itself but then it will drive you literally all the way up here to, to the viewpoint yeah. of the lagoon. This is actually our second activity here in Shella. We're just going to put this first in the video because it's probably the easiest of all the hikes that we are going to do here. It's definitely a better acclimatization hike than what we're going to show you in a minute. Definitely. Which we did first and uh, that kind of destroyed our legs a little bit. <laughs> Wasn't a good idea. No. This is a lot lower, so definitely a good one to do first if you're just arriving in Shella. There's some insanely steep stairs. I don't know if you can tell in the camera how steep it is, but definitely glad we don't have to come up this way. You can see if you look back, probably. <laughs> oh yeah. You know what this reminds me of? Like crater hike in Hawaii. Oh yeah. Where we went up the train tracks. 30 minutes on the map, mm -hmm. but it's <laughs> Thankfully we don't have to come back this way. There's three different routes up or down to the lake. Stairs is probably the easiest way down, and then we can sort of come back round on a trail that comes through the forest and winds back up. As we arrived to the edge of the laguna, we immediately noticed all the flowers lining the shoreline. Laguna Chicaba is a place of spiritual and sacred importance to those of Maya heritage in particular, and we saw many indigenous families and groups of worshippers arriving at the crater lake to perform ceremonies and leave offerings. For this reason, it is strictly forbidden to swim in the lake, so the best way to admire it is to take a stroll around the perimeter, or just sit and enjoy the tranquility of this sacred place. It's just so tranquil, so peaceful down here early in the morning. Really one of very few people here. Yeah, it's just such a stunning place. And the reason we chose obviously to come here super early is not just to have this place almost all to ourselves. It's also because the clouds start to roll in a little bit later in the day. You really want to get here early so you can see it in all its glory. So you can see now already the clouds are starting to drop and come in, which I think gives it a bit of a, a moody vibe, no? It's... Yeah, I mean, it's only 9.30 as well, so yeah. it's about the time that they say the clouds are normally coming in. So it's nice to be able to see it really clear and beautiful and mirror-like in the morning, but also now seeing it with the clouds coming down as well. Absolutely gorgeous here. As the clouds thickened and visibility got worse, we started to catch some ethereal chanting drifting across the lake towards us. crazy like we're pretty much in the same place where we came down the stairs this morning probably about 45 minutes later since we arrived and the difference is just insane the clouds just come down so quickly and they came down around half nine definitely advise getting here whichever way you do get here get here before that it's very airy and it's beautiful but because we've seen the lake mm -hmm. i think it's just even more special walking in this fog we're gonna head back up to the top now and start making our way back down into town hopefully we'll catch a camionetta all the way back to Shella.
Good morning guys, we've got up nice and early. We've come out to Santa Maria Volcano, which is actually the volcano you can see from our apartment. And we're going to be hiking all the way to the top today. Hopefully we'll get some amazing views out over Shella and the rest of the surrounding area. It's supposed to be about 3,772 meters high, quite a high altitude, and about a 10 kilometer there and back trip. This is like our first real test of being back in altitude again, so hopefully we'll find it okay. Santa Maria is supposed to be one of the harder treks you can do here in Shella because it's quite steep and quite constant all the way up. It's just hiding up behind here at the moment. Got our dog friends again. Why does it remind you of? <laughs> Anywhere in Latin America. Yeah. The dogs will lead you up. Yeah, it's gorgeous right now. Just yeah. peeped out through the trees. It doesn't look that tall from here. That's where we're going. But it's still really far away. <laughs> it's like the perfect volcano shape now. Perfect yeah. cone. It means only one thing. One way up and one way down. So far it's been fairly gradual. Nothing too strenuous. It's just the altitude as well you've got to be aware of. The sort of running theme here is that you have to get up early in order to do the hikes because the clouds tend to come in around midday and cover all the views and the mountains and everything. We've seen in the afternoons it gets really hazy. That's why we're up at like 5 a.m. this morning so we can get up there whilst it's still clear. It is a day hike from Shella, which you can do independently if you want. And there has been known to be sort of incidents along this trail in the past. We just wanted to play it on the safe side. So we booked a tour, we got one other person on the tour with us. But if you did want to come independently, then there are a few ways you can get here. Uber's pretty popular in Shella, so you can get an Uber from town. Or you could get the Camionetta bus, which starts running around 6, 6.30 I think, but does take a little bit longer to get here. It's got to factor that into your time as well and, and whether you want to get here earlier or not. When you come to the start of the Santa Maria Trail, there's actually two trails you can do. If you look on all trails, you can either do the Santa Maria Volcano Hike, or you can do the Santiaguito Mirador Hike. We initially wanted to do the Santiaguito Mirador Hike. We realized the cost was the same to do that one for Santa Maria. We chose to do Santa Maria instead, just because why wouldn't you go to the top of a volcano for the same price? How are you finding it? It's alright, but I'm out of breath a bit. Yeah. <laughs> He's not out of breath, is he? No. How are you? Very tough this one and not the most interesting hike either it's just a lot of switchbacks you don't get much of a view so it's a bit of a slog hopefully once we get to the top of the payoff's worth it and we are struggling a bit just because this is our first one at altitude for a long time and it is pretty steep somebody is struggling a lot a dodgy story. <laughs> yeah not feeling her best you're doing good got our companion so cute just stayed with us the entire time i think he knows we're struggling don't you i think i struggle with the altitude it's just really my stomach and my yeah got that yeah. inevitable travel sickness <laughs> Go back back in the <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's definitely starting to open up now as we get higher. You can see the vegetation starting to thin a little bit in and really nice views out now. Still can't see the top. It's so deceptive because you just can't tell how close you are. You know, I can ask the guide and he said it's still about an hour from here. Every turn you just like another one, another one, another one. And <laughs> never feel like you're gonna get there. But at least we are getting some nice views now. Then, after another 30 minutes or so, we finally made it to the summit. Well done. You made it. <laughs> this is so dirty. Well done. We made it. Oh, what a view.
happy. Really? <laughs> I thought, if I shook myself, I'd make it to the top, and I did. Such a crazy landscape. It's like a sea of clouds out here. Woohoo! <laughs> My energy's burning. Yeah. Just behind me, there's Santiago Ito, but unfortunately, it's covered in clouds. I think Bad that's luck. quite common, to be honest. But it is, yay. Apparently, it erupts around every 40 minutes. I thought we were going to see anything no. today. But on the plus side, we can actually see Fuego erupting. Yeah. A bit far from here. Fuego is the... Oh, God, I don't even know if you can see it on the camera. But yeah, you can see it erupting a little bit, which is pretty cool. We're in Shella here. Atalan is like the next mountain range across, and then Antigua is like the next mountain range across. So you can literally see all the way down through Guatemala. It's crazy. And on this side you can see Tajmulco, which hopefully we're going to climb in a few days time which is the, actually the highest peak in all of Central America and behind there there's a peak that's actually already in Mexico crazy how close we are yeah. the view from up here is just ah, amazing <laughs> it's erupting absolutely worth it to do this hike it's yeah. absolutely stunning can be a bit of a slog at times not gonna lie but once you're at the top the views are just oh, spectacular worth absolutely worth it maybe don't recommend doing it as your first volcano <laughs> hike in Guatemala in hindsight we probably should have done a different one first because it probably is the most difficult that's just who we are yeah. I guess start with the hardest everything from now on should be easier hopefully we're gonna be building up to Tajimulco we might have one more trek before we do Tajimulco we'll see you when we get to our next hike so we just got back from from the Santa Maria hike so obviously I haven't checked my phone all morning get back and unfortunately I got a couple of messages from Quetzal trekkers who we were supposed to be doing the Tajamulco trek with saying that unfortunately due to wildfires in the area we're not going to be able to do that one now they're a bit Jeez. disappointed of course but obviously it's understandable because it's unsafe to do it thankfully after a little bit of communication they were very accommodating and they've allowed us to take part in a different trek which has a very similar itinerary but instead of going up Tajamulco we're going to be going up a volcano called Zunil, which is quite close to Santa Maria. You can pretty much see it from the top of Santa Maria. Yeah, actually, we probably saw it on the yeah. top. We just didn't really pay attention to it because we <laughs> no. were all excited about Tajimulco. Yeah, we're excited that we still get to do something with Quetzal Trekkers and that we can still get the sort of sunrise, sunset hike that we had initially planned to do. And on top of that, we can actually finish the hike by going to the hot springs, which we wanted to go to anyway, so we don't have to go there on our own. We're basically going to hike all the way to it. So that's very exciting. So we'll catch up with you at the start of the Zunil hike. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I it's, feel a bit deja vu. It is uh, way too early again. It is the morning of the Zunil hike, which we're very excited about. We're about to set off to the Quetzal Trekkers base, to get breakfast before we start off on the hike. We're a little bit apprehensive just because this is our first one carrying pretty Quite much big bags. all I of know. our stuff. Peru yeah. seems like a five-star <laughs> hike now. Because, Luxury hiking yeah, in Peru. Exactly. We've literally got to carry, you know, all of our food for the trip, yeah. about at least five or six liters of water water plus sleeping bag and tents and everything <laughs> really the first time Not that <laughs> that we're going to be doing that so it's going to be interesting <clears throat> we'll take it slow and we'll catch up with you at the trailhead <laughs> So we've just arrived to the trailhead of Zunil Volcano, which we're going to be doing over the next two days. Yeah, very excited about yeah. it. We are doing it with an awesome non-profit organization here in Shella called Quetzal Trekkers. We've got three amazing guides. We actually yeah, got... they outnumbered us a bit. <laughs> we're, we're super privileged. They really accommodated us because of our Tajimulco cancellation. So I'm just going to introduce you guys and they'll tell you a little bit more about Quetzal Trekkers and their sort of mission. Hi there. <laughs> My name is Ben. I'm from the United States. I'm one of the volunteer guides here. I'm Carla. I'm from Germany. I've been with Quetzal Trekkers for like two months and a bit. 
I'm leaving very soon, but I'm already planning coming back. My name is Moa, I'm from Sweden. I've been here around one month. Super fun, love it. In terms of Castle Trekkers, a little brief introduction about who we are, what we are. We are the funding branch of Edelac, which stands for Escuela de la Calle, which is an NGO, so we are the main fundraiser for them. Through all the profits that are earned through these treks, through all what clients pay, it goes directly to them. All of the guides are volunteers. It just keeps the costs super low. All the profits are funneled straight to the school. What Edelac supports and what it funds is a safe home or a hogar for 60 kids. Or it's not just 60 kids, 25 kids. <laughs> yeah. And 160 kids at the school. And 160 yeah. kids at the school. So there's a primary school for 160 of them. And the hogar is a safe home essentially. So it be kids with one or no parents or from households with like a single income or just super low income families. And the safe home also provides the food, education, social services for the kids. So it's just an all around place for them to um, come and be. The other kids from the hogar, we meet up twice a week, which is super nice because we get to know them. It makes you feel more aligned with the mission and you kind of know where the money goes to. On Wednesdays, we play soccer with them, which is super exciting, <laughs> it's fun and chaotic. On Thursdays, we have dinner with them. It's one week at their place at the hogar and one week they come over to us. Awesome. Oh, amazing. Thanks guys. Just gotta say that we are paying fully for this. This, this is not a, this is a, this is not a sponsored video. No. Oh, we do pay um, pay yeah, we wanted to contribute. Oh, I think it's a great cause. We're just really excited and it's just luck of the draw that we got such a privileged like three guides to two clients. Right. The Zunil trek is around 21 kilometers long. And the nice thing about this trek is that it's actually a round trip to like Santa Maria, where it's just up and back. So far, it's not been too bad. The big difference here is that just the weight on our backs is a lot, lot heavier than what we're used to. So that's sort of the main struggle we're having. After a quick stop for some delicious trail mix, we continue descending through the forest until we reach the ridge line and our lunch spot for the day. We made it to lunch. First obstacle down. The first section was actually alright because it wasn't as many steps as like Santa Maria. Obviously what made it harder is these backpacks. We've never had them before so it was a bit of a struggle because of course you are gaining altitude and there were some pretty steep sections but luckily it was like steep and then it flattened out a little bit. So all in all it was fine and once you sit down you know, like you forget about the struggle you had. Oh, this is not a bad spot for no. lunch. You can see Fuego again in the distance. It's just erupting before. So we're just about to head out after a delicious lunch. We've got about another two and a half to three hours hiking to get to where we're staying tonight. Base camp just below the summit. There is a ridge, you can't see it at the moment. The clouds have come in which score in visibility a little bit. But there is a ridge leading along here that we're going to follow all the way over to the base camp at Zunil. The total elevation at the summit of Zunil is about 3,550 meters. So a little bit lower than Santa Maria where we were the other day. The benefit of doing this tour that we're on now with the two day trek is that obviously camping at the summit, you get the amazing sunset and sunrise it's just supposed to be spectacular from what we've seen on the photo, so really excited to get to see that. where we're going, Zunil Volcano. Uh, we've maybe got another, I don't know, 50 minutes or so, 45 minutes to base camp. Since lunch, the trail's been a lot more manageable, a lot flatter, just tr kind of tracing the ridge along a few steep sections, but really not too bad. I think when we get over to Zunil, it's gonna get a little steeper again, just for the last push. The views out towards Santa Maria, absolutely stunning with all the clouds in the valley and the volcanoes just popping up, absolutely gorgeous. After one last steep section, we finally made it into our campsite for the night. We set up the tents and our guides got straight to brewing us up a well-needed hot chocolate to give us the energy we needed for the push to the summit. Then all that was left was one final ascent and to sit back and enjoy one of the best views and best sunsets we've ever seen.
It was a truly magical experience, sitting above the clouds with only the tops of the volcanoes peeking through and the red sun dipping below the horizon. Unfortunately, all good things come to an end, so when it got dark, we headed back down to base camp where our guides had cooked up a delicious ramen dinner. How'd you sleep? Mm, I, don't know, I guess. I think I did sleep. Well, not my best sleep, but no. I slept a bit. I did not sleep well. <laughs> It's about 5.20 a.m. Currently sat on the summit of Zunil, but the sun rays just touching the horizon over in the distance. Fuego was erupting. Yeah, you can see all the volcanoes around Atitlan and Antigua beyond. It would do it a little more justice because you can still see all the stars up above, the moon is out. Just really beautiful here, really peaceful. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Nice little pre-breakfast, well, pre-breakfast surprise. I know. Wow, really cannot top this. It's you, amazing up okay. here. Just the most incredible view, panoramic view all the way around the top of the mountain. You're just seeing volcanoes and peaks everywhere, rolling clouds. It's just, just incredible. Stunning. It's definitely one of the absolute top spots that we have ever watched a sunset and a yeah. sunrise. And it makes all of the sweat and the dirt. <laughs> carrying those heavy bags <laughs> worth it. Yeah, definitely. all the uncomfortable moments, absolutely worth it. You know, at times you're just questioning your life choices. <laughs> Then you get to moments like this and it's just definitely worth every drop of sweat gonna have some breakfast up here at the top and then we're going to be heading down towards the hot springs this afternoon yeah. i'm looking forward to that because my muscles are in pain yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's going to be really welcome Ready to go? Ready to go. Oh, Last leg. <laughs> oh, that's actually pretty light. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, much God. lighter than yesterday. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the hot springs. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. And lunch. We actually haven't seen a single other soul on this no, entire that's walk. Not a hiker. We've seen a couple of locals, mostly from a distance. It really is somewhat of a hidden gem. I think Quetzal Trekkers are the only company that actually take people up Zunil. 100% it's worth it because you just feel like you're completely you're alone. Your that's sort of reflected in how much trash you can see as you walk along, like when we were going up Santa Maria. Yeah, it was crazy. It, it was, was just you, trash everywhere. Yeah. You could have filled like a hundred bags full of trash on the way up. Coming up Zunil, we really didn't see a single piece of trash. Coming down there's a little bit more i think we're coming yeah. down a slightly more walked route it's quite easy to collect a bag <laughs> our guides are picking up rubbish as they go so that's a really nice touch as well just doing whatever they can to help out this beautiful yeah, environment always leave better than you found it After another brief trail mix break, with some fantastic views of Santa Maria Volcano, we continued our descent through the cloud forest. The path down from Zunil is a mix of nice, sloping footpaths and some seriously steep, slippery sections through trails that are a little overgrown. After what seemed like an eternity on tired legs, we finally made it down to the Fuentes Georgina's hot springs. Literally walking right into the hot springs. <laughs> Out of the jungle. Well done guys. Well done. Sorry, we got back. Well done. Oh, not that was rubbish. <laughs> we had a delicious lunch in the on-site restaurant before finally getting to soak our exhausted muscles in the warm waters of the hot springs.
So we're just down relaxing in the hot springs now. We didn't realize there's two separate areas of the Quintus Georginus hot springs. There's the area up at the top, which is more of a public area. When we arrived, it looked quite busy up there and the pools looked, you know, okay, but nowhere near as nice as down here. Down here is like more of a private area. You have to pay a little bit extra. And this is the area that if you see pictures online, this is the area that you will see. It's a lot more beautiful. We're in this like lush valley surrounded by forests. Really, really nice. And really right now, we're the only ones here. It was a little busy when we got down, but way less people than if you're, you're up there. For the extra price, it's definitely worth coming down here. After a couple of hours and with much fresher muscles, we left the hot springs and jumped in the pickup truck to take us back to Chella. So to sum up our Zunil adventure, we just had the most amazing time. Yeah. It's one that we just wouldn't have even probably considered doing had the Tajimulco trek not fallen through. It just wasn't really on our radar. We were going to go to the Fuentes Georginas hot springs anyway. Yeah, so that was a perfect So that was a really nice that. bonus. It was a very nice way to finish our hike. To be yeah, fair. Wessel Trek is the only ones who do this and our experience with them has just been phenomenal. Our guys were incredible. We were a bit outnumbered, but it was amazing to get to know them, especially on a two-day hike. And they also gave us loads of information about Guatemala, history, all like different legends and it was really really amazing so we learned a lot. That brings our time in Shella to a close. We've had an amazing time here. A bit sad. We're gonna be sad to leave but we are heading down to Atitlan now which is a super popular place here in Guatemala and we're very excited to see what uh, all the fuss is about. So we'll see you when we get there. Bye. Bye.